Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 10. After 100 days with a new chief, the dust may have settled within the West Fargo Police Department, but it's not cleaned up. Results of a new survey are out, and they indicate that not all are happy, despite replacing former Chief Mike Wrighton with Heath Yonke. Wrighton was blamed for creating a toxic, hostile work environment. Yonke has taken the lead role in rebuilding the department. Valley News Team's Molly Casey reviews the survey results. Molly? Mike, Andrea, the results of that survey show that the West Fargo Police Department has a lot of work to do to rebuild the strength and trust within the force. One recurring theme, many staff members don't see sergeants leaving the station for active patrol or duties often enough. Some saying that sergeants often get caught up in reports and that more staffing may help, which Mayor Rich Matten says is on Chief Yonke's list to do. is going to do some restructuring with the sergeant then and I think he's going to add at least one or two move people up the ranks so that we have more people that are decision makers out on the street. Mattern says those additions will add stability for officers out on patrol every day of the week but those added hours and other necessary changes will likely lead to higher costs for the department. Mattern says they are ready to support Chief Yonke. And I think we, he's got the backing of everybody in the city commission. So uh, I think he wants to explain that, at least explain the changes he's going to make. And we left kind of the budget a little open-ended for him. While the survey respondents did allude to many issues needing to be resolved, most said they felt bringing in Chief Yonke from outside of the department was the right move. Mike and Andrea. All right, thank you. Chief Yonke will address the West Fargo Police Department staff survey in depth at Monday's City Commission meeting, and we'll hear more from him after the presentation. It's cold and windy out. In fact, it has been for much of the day. Hutch, should we be expecting the same type of weather conditions tomorrow morning? Actually, we have deteriorating weather conditions that are expected as we head into the overnight hours. As we talked about at 6 o'clock, Mixed precipitation in the western Dakotas is working its way towards us. Take a look at the pink on the radar, and this is where we're getting uh, that mix of rain, sleet, and freezing rain. Freezing rain, a possibility, particularly along the Highway 2 corridor this evening. There's a little bit of activity showing up in the Fergus Falls area in western Minnesota. Not all of that reaching the ground, but where you see the deep shades of pink in north-central portions of North Dakota will continue its trek northeast tonight. Some will get snowy roads. Nonetheless, icy conditions are likely. A winter weather advisory for areas of freezing rain tonight. For much of northeast North Dakota and parts of northwest Minnesota, we will see some snow as we go through the night as well. Winds are still gusting to almost 40 miles per hour, believe it or not. We'll have details on a chilly close to the work week. And Mike, the weekend promises to bring some warmer temperatures. We'll have details on that and take a look forward to the holiday outlook as well. All right, thanks. The Ohio State University is suspending all 37 fraternities at the school, calling it a proactive step. The university said it's been investigating 11 of the fraternities for violations since the beginning of the school year. The school said it has the highest number of cases of alcohol violations and hazing that it's seen in recent years during just this semester alone. The university told the fraternities that each one is expected to develop a plan and implementation timeline to deal with the issue. The suspension does not apply to sororities. The school bus driver in Minnesota hauling your kids around could be a sex offender. There's a Minnesota law that overlooks school bus drivers, only disqualifying candidates if they're convicted of a sex offense. But the Moorhead School District found this loophole and they're trying to short circuit it. The loophole is tricky. While convicted offenders are automatically disqualified from employment, the ones accused but not yet convicted are eligible. Moorhead Public Schools has strict rules that they follow when hiring new bus drivers. We do everything we know how to do to, to make sure that our, our employees are on the up and up, um, free from any criminal violations that would put students at risk. Minnesota Governor Mark Dayton says he's shocked to hear about the loophole and he tells our Twin Cities affiliate he plans on working with Minnesota lawmakers who share his concern. 
A Minnesota woman and state trooper are being hailed as heroes after saving a choking baby. In September, Kristen Lonsberry says she was driving down the interstate when her six-week-old infant started choking. She pulled over, and that's when the Good Samaritans came to the rescue. Reporter Zachary Lashway has our story. A cry that almost wasn't. So I was driving on 394. I had heard her choking on her vomit. Kristen Lonsberry recalling the frightening moments of September 14th. And then I heard silence. So then I was like, well, I need to pull over. And that's what she did on the only grassy patch of curbside between Highway 100 and Penn Avenue. She was kind of going in and out of consciousness. I went over my passenger seat and pulled her out and her little arms just dropped to her side. Kristen called 911. Just couldn't do what they were asking me to do. I couldn't grasp the concept. Oh, I have to start CPR. Hysterical. Yelling at her to wake up. But help was about to arrive. Virginia was there in her scrubs. Virginia Marsh, a nurse on her way to work. When I turned her over and just started doing the back blows. Lieutenant Paul Stricker also stopped. Told Virginia, just keep going. Let's, as long as we can keep blood moving, we'll be okay till the ambulance gets here. Elise spent several days in the hospital. You whispered to me, you said, it wasn't her time yet. Oh. <laughs> and that's the part that I just, it wasn't, it wasn't her time. And, um, she has so much to do here, so <laughs> thank you. Happy and healthy, Elise is now 14 weeks old. And although she will not remember those terrifying moments, her new middle name will remind her of the hero who saved her life. We have changed her middle name to Virginia uh, just to keep a piece of you with her. <laughs> Lieutenant Stricker and Marsh have been nominated to receive a State Patrol Life-Saving Award. Very nice. Oh, that's a great story. Still to come tonight, fallout for Senator Al Franken after sexual assault allegations surfaced from over a decade ago. Up next, it's a growing movement, people pushing for greater compassion and, compa and companionship for those who are dying.